In the previous lecture, we saw different activities of test process, and in this lecture, we will see what is the output of those activities. The output of the test activity is called test work product. So this is going to be our third topic of this session, where we have to differentiate the work products that support the test process. And it is marked as K2, so we have to understand this topic. Similar to test process, we have ISO standard for test work product. And it is ISO IEC IEEE 29119-3. This standard only provides the template, but actual implementation depends on the context, as we saw in the test process. It varies from organization to organization and product to product. Now let's see what is the output of test planning and test monitoring phase. The output of test planning is test plans, which contains all the scheduling related details, exit criteria, it tells when to say test activity is completed, traceability information, here we decide link between test basis and output of test activity. Now let's see the output of test monitoring stage. As we know, test monitoring is done at each test activity, and at the end of that test activity, we collect the test report of that stage like test progress report, test summary report. And during test monitoring, we decide if task is completed, resources allocated properly, and they are used efficiently, or if additional effort is required. These were the test work products of test planning and test monitoring. Now let's see the output of test analysis, design, implementation, execution, and completion. We will start with test analysis. First output, which we get, is defined and prioritized test conditions. So along with finding the test condition, we also prioritize them. Second output is creation of test charter. Test charter means documentation of the goal or objective for a test session. Third output is discovery and reporting of defects in the test basis. Now let's see the output of test design activity. First output is test case and set of test case. As we know, during test design, we write test cases, and therefore test case is the output. Second point is identification of the test data. Here, be careful. In the test design stage, we only identify the test data. We don't prepare them. Preparation of the test data is done in test implementation stage, so be careful with this point. Similar to this is the third point. Test environment is designed in the test design stage, whereas it is implemented in the test implementation stage. Along with test data and test environment, test infrastructure and tools are identified in this stage. So be careful with these points. Test data, test environment, infrastructure, and tool are only identified in test design stage. Now let's see the work product of test implementation. First output is test procedures and the sequencing of those test procedures. Second output is test suits. Test suit is collection of test scripts in execution order. Third point is test execution schedule. Fourth output is service virtualization and automated test scripts. In some cases, test implementation involves creating work products using or used by tools, such as service virtualization and automated test scripts. Fifth output is creation of test data and test environment. During test design, we only identify test data and test environment, but in test implementation, they are created. Last point is, Test conditions defined in test analysis may be further refined in test implementation. Now let's see the work product of test execution. First output is documentation of the status of individual test cases or test procedures. 
Since the test case is run here, we need to document how many test cases are ready to run, how many test cases are passed and failed, how many test cases didn't execute, and how many test cases we didn't execute deliberately. Second output is defect report. During test execution, test cases are executed and expected result is compared with measured result, and if they are not same, then defect is reported. Third output is documentation about which test item, test object, test tools, and testware were involved in the testing. So all the things used during test execution are documented and stored so that they can be used again if asked. Finally, test completion. This is the test activity, which comes once all other test activities are completed. So here, our task is to collect all the reports like test summary report. Along with report, we need to document any improvement points which we can use for next release. Next point is related to change request or backlog. During test activity, if we didn't test any test case or if we didn't execute some test scripts, then we need to document them so that we can address them in next release. Last point is finalized testware. Everything which was used during testing and all the output are stored. Many of the test work products described in this section can be captured and managed using test management tools and defect management tools. This was the complete explanation of test work product topic. This topic is very important, so please read it once again, and if necessary, watch the video again to remember all the points mentioned. Thank you.